Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, this morning has been wild. Um, you know how the Lord rolls. <laughs> uh, I had this cool message prepared. <laughs> and uh, as I was wrapping it up, actually, as I was wrapping it up, uh, the Lord, the Lord downloaded this to me, and I wasn't for sure if I was supposed to give this to just the leadership or to everybody. And and He sets the table. You know, the Lord prepares a table in the midst of our enemies. And so as I came pulling down the road, I live over there, and I was driving this way. As I come pulling down the road, there was a bunch of people standing out the front door, and I'm like, "What are all them people doing?" And uh. Let me just back up even before that. I was walking out my door, and as I was walking out the door, the Lord said, grab your church keys. I don't ever carry my church keys, ever. If you guys don't know, um, I just don't do that. So I ran in the house, and I grabbed the church keys. And then as I'm walking out to my truck, the Lord said, who do you fear more, me or man? And I said, well, I fear you more. And he said, okay, then do what I asked you to do. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> And then I hopped in my truck, and I drove, and as I was pulling down the deal, there was a bunch of people standing outside. And I pulled in, and uh, is there tape up here? Am I supposed to be standing in this certain area? Oh, nice. Nice. Um, and anyway, uh, I pulled in, and everybody was locked out. Nobody had brought their keys. And uh, so I brought my keys, and I, and I felt like... The Lord gave me a message to share, and I didn't know. I was asking him, even, I'm driving, I was, even as I'm driving, am, am I supposed to share this with the people or just the leadership? And since I just took it as a cue that it was just for the leadership, since all of the leadership was standing outside of the front door, and I had the keys to get into the door, and I said, guys, i got to share this with you. And we came in and we shared it, and then after a brief discussion, a handful of them came back and said, I really feel like you should share this with the congregation. And so before we get into my super cool, super amazing thing that the Lord gave me a few days ago. We're going to go into this. And uh, <laughs> I wrestled with it because I was, I was telling the Lord, I don't want to be like Jeremiah, Lord. <laughs> why, can't, why can't I just give the cool messages where everybody understands and comprehends? Why do I have to be the guy that delivers the hammer all the time? And you guys have heard me say before, I didn't mind delivering the hammer um, as long as I can act a fool and speak ridiculous language, it never bothered me at all. But to deliver the hammer the way that the Lord wants it to be delivered is a little foreign to what I, I, I could comprehend or understand. So anyway, this is what the Lord said, and I know that it's for this time. So if you got your Bibles with me, um, please turn to Micah. Um, you can write it down and keep it notes, but I'm going to ask you guys for real to pray on this. Pray on this and see what the Lord is telling you. But uh, we're going to go with, uh, it's going to be in Micah chapter 5, verses 7 through 15, and we're actually going to roll through 6, uh, Micah chapter 6, 1 through 8. And then and we're going to finish off on Zephaniah chapter 2, 1 and 3. Now, I know that's a lot, but uh, that's okay. Lord, I just ask that you would soften everybody's heart. Lord, I just ask that you would give them ears to hear again, Lord, and I ask that you would magnify your voice during this. Lord, let it permeate all of us. Lord, we thank you that your word goes forth and it does not come back void. It does not come back without doing what you had intended it to do. So I'll be reading out of the, uh, the New Living Chan Translation, and we're going to start um, in Micah chapter 5, verses, uh, I have 7 through 15. And here we go. In the New Living Translation, Micah chapter 5, verses 7 through 15, it says, Then the few left in Israel will go out among the nations. They will be like dew sent by the Lord or like rain falling on the grass, which no one can hold back. The remnant of Israel will go out among the nations and be as strong as a lion. And the other nations will be like helpless sheep with no one to rescue them. The people of Israel will stand up to their foes and all their enemies will be wiped out. At the same time, says the Lord, I will destroy all your weapons, your horses, your, chariot, your chariots. I will tear down your walls and demolish the defenses of your cities. I will put an end to all the witchcraft. There will be no more fortune tellers to consult. I will destroy all your idols and sacred pillars, so you will never again worship the work of your hands. I will abolish your pagan shrines 
with their Asherah poles and destroy the cities where your idol temples stand. I will pour out my vengeance on all nations that refuse to obey me. Now I want to stop right there for just a minute. I don't know if you guys recognize the seriousness of this, but the Lord is issuing a warning right now. He's issuing a warning. Listen, the Lord has already shaken the world. He's already shaken the nations and he's grabbed our attentions when all of this ridiculousness started, this ridiculousness with COVID-19. This is a worldwide situation. The Lord had grabbed our attention, caused us to pause. He stopped life worldwide and said, look and listen to what I'm saying. Okay? He had our attention. And so quickly it says in Proverbs, for this reason a dog returns to his vomit. Just as quickly as it stopped, we so quickly go back to what we already come out of. And that's idol worship. That's man-made service. That's man-made church. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. We, not only, not only here, but we worldwide are already looking to go back to the way that it used to be. Idol worship. Where is our time? Where is our time distributed? Okay, where is our time distributed? If you can recognize where your time is deposited, you will recognize where your idol worship is. If you can recognize where you put your money, you can recognize where your idol worship is. Okay, and the Lord is giving us a warning again. He's giving us a warning. I'm telling you right now, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. And it's not a good feeling, okay? Let's go on over here to same, 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 same book, just rolling into the next chapter, okay? Listen to what the Lord is saying. Stand up and state your case against me. Let the mountains and the hills be called to witness your complaints. And now, O mountains, listen to the Lord's complaint. He has a case against his people, Israel. The Lord has a case against us, and he's sharing it. He will prosecute them to the full extent of the law. O my people, what have I done to make you turn from me? Tell me why your patience is exhausted. Answer me. For I brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron, and Miriam to help you. I want to take a pause. What did we just come through Passover? We just came through Passover and Pentecost. And you guys know that Passover was actually the freedom from the Israelites, from the Egyptian slavery, from the bondage of, of Egypt. We just came through that. We had been talking about we're being in a, in a Kronos and a Kairos moment. We was at Kronos being a chronological time, a chronological order of events in which we had come through. And Kronos being a primed, ripe time, a, a, a select season that the Lord is going to intervene. The way that we had been doing life as we know it is no longer acceptable and he said enough is enough he's intervening and so we begin to actually experience Passover we was this is the first time in our history where we had to honor Passover we was locked down we was not supposed to be out you guys know that right and so that's how I another reason that I know that I know is because the Lord is using the thing that we just went through to now give us a warning you know we honored it for a time and we came out and we was like, okay, what's the Lord doing? Everybody's looking in, looking around, pressing in, trying to hear the Lord. And we went through Pentecost and there was a lot of excitement. And now Pentecost has come and gone. And so many in the world are going back to the way that it used to be. They're trying to go back into the bondage of the dollar. They're trying to go back into bondage of the government, of systematic handouts. Systematic manipulation and control. We have lived that for so long that we are so looking to go back to it. <sighs> Number five. Don't you remember, my people, how King Balak of Moab tried to have you cursed and how Balaam, son of Beor, blessed you instead? And remember your journey from Acacia to Gigal when I, the Lord, did everything I could to teach you about my faithfulness? That's the theme that we've been rolling through here lately is the faithfulness of God, that he's faithful to himself, that he's faithful to himself, that as he started a good work in each and every one of us, that he is faithful to finish the good work that he has prepared. Hmm. In fact, it says in Psalm 139 <laughs> that all the days of our lives were written in a book and they were laid out before we ever even began. <laughs> Number six. What can we bring to the Lord to make up for what we've done? Should we bow before God with offerings and yearling calves? 
Should we offer him thousands of rams and ten thousands of rivers of olive oil? Would that please the Lord? Should we sacrifice our firstborn children to pay for the sins of our souls? Would that make him glad? No, O people, the Lord has already told you what is good, and this is what he requires, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. That is what the Lord is requiring of us. That is what the Lord is requiring of us right now. Right now. I myself am at fault for this, guys. You know, people ask me to wear my mask. I have a meltdown. I have an absolute meltdown. Is that really a hill that I'm really willing to die on? Do I need to fight to the death over whether or not to wear a mask? Really? Is that humility or is that pride and arrogance? Just a thought. Turn with me to Zephaniah chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Zephaniah 2, verses 1 through 3. Gather together and pray, you shameless nation. Gather while there is still time, before judgment begins and your opportunity is blown away like chaff. Act now before the fierce fury of the Lord falls and the terrible day of the Lord's anger begins. Beg the Lord to save you, all who are humble and all who uphold justice. Walk humbly and do what is right. Perhaps even yet the Lord will protect you from his anger on that day of destruction. Aren't those fun words? That's what the Lord told me to share this morning. When I thought I had a happy-go-lucky, peace, joy, everybody have a great day, and the Lord says, no, I want you to show up and I want you to point out the sins. I want you to point out their idol worship. Not just you. I'm not saying that at you. I'm saying us, our, 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 our idol worship. <laughs> and the Lord has told us what to do, what is pleasing in his sight. He's told us to love mercy. <laughs> He's told us to walk humbly with him. Is that what we're doing? Are we having mercy for the people that are deceived? For the people that are following the, the, uh, the narrative of the world? People that are following the narrative of what the Bible calls the prince of this world, which would be Satan. There's people that are duped. Are we loving mercy and praying for them? Are we lifting them up? Are we condemning them? Are we crushing them because they don't have the insight or the foreknowledge of the things to come? Just a question. If the shoe doesn't fit, then don't put it on your foot. But if the shoe fits, wear it. The Lord is calling us out, not just this local body, but I believe this is a worldwide thing. We need to get it together. This ain't a game, time is short. Time is short. Does the word not say, pray for your enemies? Hmm. Or does it say, condemn them to hell? Just a thought. <laughs> In fact, I don't see too many places where it says to pray for all of my family members, but a lot of times it says, pray for your enemies. I think we got it mixed up, guys. We got it mixed up. <sighs> so we're just going to take just a minute. Just a minute. You can do it how you want or you can listen to me. Repentance is simple. It is to turn away from what we were doing and to get in line with what the Lord is doing. It is to turn away from the nonsense and get in line with what he's doing. Is it too much to ask to love mercy? Is it too much to ask to walk humbly with the Lord? Have we become so familiar with his word that we know more than he does? When he even says that... My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Have we become so familiar with the God that we hardly know? I'm just asking. <sighs> Lord, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are truth, that you lead us into all truth. Lord, it is so humbling to be called your sons and daughters. And Lord, we repent. Lord, I ask for, for your forgiveness, for pride, for arrogance, for doing the things that you have asked us to do, for being against you. 
Lord, we ask that you would help us to get back in line with your plans and your purposes. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of us. Lord, we ask that you would wash us and make us white as snow. Lord, we ask that you would permeate all of our beings with the blood of Jesus. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We humbly want to hold your hand and walk in the way in which you lead. Lord, we're asking for your help. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Please, guys, read the word. Ask the Holy Spirit to share with you what he is wanting to say. The time is short. I've heard it my whole life. The time is short, and I've blown it off like it was no big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. (sighs) Lord, I ask that you would do what only you can do. Love on us, strengthen us, renew us, encourage us, correct us. Lord, we give you permission. We open our hearts to you. Have your way. Okay, okay, that was what the Lord wanted to share. (laughs) That's what I feel the Lord wanted to share before we got into this, okay? It's very somber, isn't it? Is it not? You know, our Father isn't always all fun and games. He means business, okay? There's a time for everything. There's a time for joy. There's a time for discipline, okay? And we can function under self-discipline or we can receive his discipline. The choice is ours. All right, I'm off. I'm off to the next thing. So, uh, (laughs) thank you, Lord. So last week during service, um, an old friend, I haven't seen him for months. I don't think I've seen him probably since September, actually. He came to the service and uh, I just turned around and caught a glance of him. And as soon as I glanced him, like a billion things happened all at once. Like, <laughs> like this big explosion of information came. And, uh, and I, had a, I had a prophetic word for him. And, but, you know, um, my awesome friend was given an amazing message last week. Nathan, Nathan, you did awesome last week. But while he's up here giving a message, it's inappropriate for me to walk up here and go, hey, move out of the way, stop talking, I got a word for somebody. There is an order of events. There's an order. The Lord is a God of order. And so we need to recognize that. There's a time and place for everything. So as Nathan was given an amazing message, it was not the time nor the place for me to interrupt to give a prophetic word to a guy that could be handled personally. So I thought, okay, we'll just wait till the service and we'll go over there and share what what I believe the Lord is sharing about this fella. And and, and, and Nathan closed out the service and we went to our second um, little worship, our, our, our time, our ministry time. And I turned around, and the dude was bolting out of here. He was leaving. And I was like, huh. And the Lord started talking to me. He said, did you see that? And I said, did you see what? And he said, that man came seeking me, but he left before I had an opportunity to respond. And I said, what? And he said, yeah. That guy came looking for a word, and I had a word to give him. But before I had an opportunity to give him the word, he ran away. And I said, no way. And he said, way. (laughs) And he said, that's what so many in the body do. That's what so many in the body do. And I'm like, can you, okay, Lord, okay, obviously we're having a conversation. Can you help me to understand what you're trying to say? And that's how we came up with this message of ask, seek, and knock. Okay, and it's actually in Matthew uh, chapter 7, if you guys would like to, um, Turn to Matthew chapter 7, and if you wouldn't like to, it's okay, because I'm going to read it to you anyway. So um, we're going to hang out, or or, or the basis for all of this is Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. And uh, I'll just read it to you right quick, okay? Uh, The the, the subtitle or the letterhead is Effective Prayer. And um, in Matthew chapter 7... Verses 7, it says, keep on asking. Now, this is Jesus talking. The letters are in red. This is Jesus 
uh, sharing with us. This is actually um, this is actually what, what, what we call uh, the Sermon on the Mount, or it's commonly called the Sermon on the Mount. So this is where Jesus was teaching a lot, all at one time. And even in that, it rocked my world. I was reading it this morning, and, 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 and I'm like, wow, I wonder how long that took. Like chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8. I wonder how long that took. Do we have what it takes when the Lord is rolling, when the Lord is instructing us? Do we have what it takes to sit there, shut up, and listen to Him? Or do we look at the clock and go, oh, it's 1130, it's time for lunch, I wish He would shut up. Because I can tell you right now, Jesus took a little more time than 30 minutes to get His message across. When you're talking souls in eternity... Invest a little. Sorry about that. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Keep on asking and you will be giving what you ask for. Keep on looking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And the door is opened to everyone who knocks. Okay, that's, that's, what we're gonna, that's where we're going to hang out. That's where we're going to hang out, okay? Now, I want to encourage you guys all to read... Matthew chapter 7. It's good to read. It's good when Jesus, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is speaking, it's good for us to pay special attention to that. You know, we, we are called to be his disciples. So when he speaks and, you know, students of the master craftsman, we should pay attention to that. So I want to encourage you guys to read all of Matthew chapter 7, not just this. But uh, what we're talking about right here in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, it's actually a description of the truly righteous lifestyle. The righteous lifestyle. This is a description of the truly righteous lifestyle. It's actually an outline of the law of Christ. How many of you have heard that? The law of Christ. All of us have heard the law. And we tend to shy away from the law. But actually that's a miscommunicated translation that it isn't even the law. It's called the instruction. You know, we call the book of the law, it's actually the book of instruction because the Father gives instruction. Who wants to obey the law? Not a lot of us. Who wants to receive instruction from their Father? A lot of us. And see, I never knew that there was a law of Christ. Actually, this is new to me to this morning. So I thank you, Lord, for that. What is the law of Christ? It's funny you should ask. It's actually in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 21. I'll turn there. If, I should have marked all these. I'm sorry, but Lord, I ask that you would give my brothers and sisters grace for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 21. It says, "When I this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. He wrote them a letter. It says, When I am with the Gentiles who do not have the Jewish law, I fit in with them as much as I can. In this way, I gain their confidence and bring them to Christ. But I do not discard the law of God. I obey the law of Christ. That's new to me. I didn't know there was a law of Christ. And I'm like, huh, what's a law of Christ? And the Lord took me back over to Matthew 7, verses 7 and 8. And he said, let me help you to understand the law of Christ. <laughs> and I'm like, sweet. So... And we just read it, Matthew 7, 7 and 8. It says, ask and you will receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened. Am I correct? You're all, we're all reading the same Bible, right? <laughs> now, prayer or asking is how we communicate our needs and desires to God. You guys know that, right? I mean, God knows everything already. But this is the avenue in which he has chosen for us to commune and to communicate with him is through prayer. Now, I have an amazing daughter here who asks me for all kinds of things all the time. <laughs> and the answer isn't always yes. But if she never asks, the answer is always no. Are you following? So Jesus is not simply saying that we always get what that we want or ask for. You know, according to James 4, 3, wrong motives will hinder what we're asking for. You know, James 4, 2, it says you have not because you ask not. In James 4, 3, it says, and then when you ask, you don't always get what you want because your motives are wrong. You only want what will give you self-pleasure. <laughs> it's pretty wild. You know how Solomon got all the wisdom that he had? It was because he asked for something that was going to benefit other people. Solomon gained. God said, what do you want? Solomon, I'll give you anything you want. He could have asked for anything. And he said, Lord, your people are so great. 
And I ask for wisdom to be able to lead your people, your great nation, Lord. I ask that I could benefit them. And the Lord said, aha, good answer, son. Good answer. Because you have asked, not asked for riches and gold or long life, I'm going to give you what you asked for, and then I'm going to give you everything that you really wanted. But because you asked to bless other people, I'm going to give you everything that you ever want. Is that not amazing? You see how that works? Your life is not your own when you ask Christ to be your Lord and Savior. <laughs> My existence is for other people's benefit. Isn't that a tough pill to swallow? Well, I thought my existence was to drive a Ferrari and be a multi-gazillionaire and live the cush life. Wrong. <laughs> rude awakening. Lord, thank you for that rude awakening. So, huh, the more time we spend in communion with God, the more we will know what to ask for in accordance to His will. And that's for His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's in Matthew 6.10. The whole purpose for us to pray to God isn't for us to tell Him, <laughs> actually. It's for us to spend time with Him, and He will tell us what to pray. And then we come in to line with His will, and it all happens. Whew, man, I feel like everybody's so serious out there today. <laughs> Jesus went on to say, seek and you will find. What is it that we should be seeking? That's funny. What is it that we should be seeking? We should be seeking God himself. God himself. Okay. Psalm 27, 8, in the New Living Translation, it says, my heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. Have you ever heard the Lord say, come and talk with me? I woke up my daughter this morning because I couldn't wait for her to come and talk with me. And as I woke her up, the Lord was talking to me. And he said, you see what you just did? And I'm like, I did. And he said, that's what I do with you. I got up extra early this morning. I got up at 4.30 because the Lord wouldn't let me sleep no more. Actually, I started rolling around at 4, 4, 5, 4, 10, 4, 15. And I'm like, fine, I'll get up. Thank the good Lord Sydney didn't do that. She just woke up with a smile. <laughs> the Lord wants to spend time with us. We are to be seeking Him. Seek Him and you will find Him. Psalm 105.4 says, Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His face evermore. When we go into prayer, do we seek the Lord? Do we seek His face? Or do we just tell Him what we want? I want to point out again, that's a recognition on where you are in your walk with the Lord. When it's all about me, 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 I, 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 help me, help me, help me, I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. That shows your maturity level in your walk with the Lord. When you go to the Lord and you're asking Him to help other people, bless other people, change circumstances for other individuals, it shows that we're starting to get it. We're starting to understand that it isn't all about us. <laughs> I'm so thankful that I have brothers and sisters that pray for me because I don't always pray for myself. <laughs> I just struggle through it like a bonehead. <sighs> Psalm 119, 2, it says, Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. With our whole heart. With everything that we are. Not a piece, not a sliver. The Lord deserves the best. I hit my friend up just uh, last night, actually. My friend come over and we were visiting just for a few minutes. And the Lord, I asked him a question. And when I asked him the question, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, I'm asking you that. Not for you to ask him, I'm asking that to you. And have you ever heard about tithes? A tenth, the first fruits. We guys have heard that, right? Okay, a tenth of what we have. Have you ever thought about a tenth of your time? Because I asked my buddy last night, I said, the Lord requires a tenth, but do we give him two hours and 40 minutes a day? Because there's 24 hours in the day, and a tenth of that is two hours and 40 minutes. Or do I only give him a fraction of that time and then hope for the best? Do we really seek him with our whole heart? Or just what's left over at the end of the day? Oh, I really don't feel like it, but I got to read a little bit, so here you go, Lord. Is that honoring God the Father? Is that placing Him first and foremost? 
man, it is so somber in here. I love you guys. I really do. This isn't meant to be harmful or hurtful. <laughs> God the Father, God, our Father, our Heavenly Father, God, He is not hiding from His children. His heart's desire is for us to passionately and persistently look for Him all around us. The Lord is developing me in that area as I'm beginning to see the Lord in every situation and every circumstance. And sometimes I'm blinded to it. Yesterday I was blinded to it and I acted a fool. I had to ask two of my brothers to forgive me because I acted like a total knucklehead all day long. And I'm so grateful and, and, and they're so graceful that they said, dude, no problem. It's cool. You're forgiven. And then I went to the Lord and was like, Lord, what was that all about? And the Lord proceeded to show me. He said, you know, usually every day you get up and you spend an hour with me. But this week was different. You got overburdened with work. You didn't spend time with me throughout the week. You missed the Bible study on Wednesday. You woke up late for work today. You went rushing out the door, and you never had no time for me. Now, you see, this is the consequence of the decisions that you made. I chose to not spend time with the Lord, whether it was an accident or not. When I woke up late, I still could have spent time with the Lord, but work was more important. Or was it? When I chose to make work more important, I experienced the consequence of that. My day was horrible. When I came home, I was ready to... <laughs> Anywho, when we passionately, persistently look for him all around us, he promises that he will be found. Proverbs 8, 17 says, I love them that love me, and they that seek me early will find me. Now, I've read that so many times, and I thought in my head, that means if I seek the Lord when I'm a young person, if I seek the Lord when I'm a young person, I will find him. And then this morning, it hit me. If I seek him early, first thing in the morning, and give him the best of me instead of what's left of me, I will find him. The simplicity of it, right? <laughs> the simplicity of it. <laughs> oh. Turn with me if you can to Psalm 4610. I know I'm all over. Guys, I, I, I know. I'm not. I'm whatever. <laughs> it's important to me to go over tons of scripture. I've told you a hundred times that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword to the dividing of the asunder of the soul and the spirit. You know, whatever I have to say isn't near as important as this word. When we speak this word, changes happen. It cuts right through the nonsense. And so I love telling my stories, but this word is more important than them stories. So we're going to read the scriptures. If you don't like the scriptures, Lord help you, because you're going to get them here. <laughs> Psalm 4610, ready? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Now I want to jump over here to the same verse, just a, different, just a different translation, New Living Translation. Psalm 4610, it says, Be silent and know that I am God. And you guys have heard me say it a hundred times. Be silent and know that I am God. The words silent and listen are spelled with the same words. Be silent. Listen. The Lord will speak. But we're so busy with what we got to get done, where we got to do, who we got to meet, when do I got to eat, I got to do chores, I got to take care of the animals, blah, 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 blah. The time with the Lord gets crowded out because we're not silent. It's discipline. It's hard. The Lord desires to invade us. The Lord desires... He... <laughs> How do I say it? The Lord doesn't want to make it easy for you. <laughs> the Lord wants to... He wants to be a problematic because that's causing you to put Him first. It's causing you to make a conscious decision. I will honor the Lord. If it was easy... I think about my wife. <laughs> she made me pursue her. And it proved that I loved her. It proved that I was willing to lay down my life, that I wanted to commit fully to her. 
I didn't nonchalantly go, hey girl, you want to be my wife? No. <laughs> Maybe some of us did, but I wasn't that guy. <laughs> seeking, seeking the Lord. Okay, ask, seek, and knock. Seeking is a matter of paying attention with an engaged mind and an acute awareness. When I am quietly seeking the Lord, it goes, well, you have to do scheduling. I'm like, shut up. All right, Lord, what are you saying? Well, you only got 30 more minutes. Shut up. Lord, what are you saying? Oh, the dog is tipper tapping on the floor. I wish he would stop making all that noise. Just shut up. Lord, what are you saying? Oh, there's Susie rustling around and starting to wake up for that. Shut up. What is the Lord saying? All of these little things. To seek the Lord, we have to choose to focus a acute awareness with pinpoint accuracy. And I don't always get it. I don't always make it. I don't always hear the Lord every day. But I try. <laughs> but I try. What's funny is when I least expect it is when he speaks. I'm like, here I am, Lord, speak. Nothing. Oh, what a waste of time. Here I am, Lord, tell me something. Nothing. And I'm like, oh, Lord, if you feel like talking, and he's like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, whoa, how do I get to that all the time? <laughs> hmm. <sighs> Earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, <clears throat> in Matthew 6, 33, Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And again, I propose that maybe that has to do with first every single day. Not just in a general overall statement, but if I wake up and seek him first, seek the kingdom of God first, and his righteousness, all these things will be added unto me. So seeking God's kingdom means putting God's plan before your own plan. How many of us have plans? What we're going to do, what we want, where we want to be, what do we, you know, how are we going to influence our world today? But seeking his kingdom is seeking his will above our own. Are we willing to do that? Or do we have idols that we've put in the number one position above and beyond God? The idols that he was just telling us we need to get it together over. Seeking God's righteousness means setting a priority on personal holiness and desiring to be sanctified. Who wants to be sanctified? Not me. I want to party like a rock star. I want to do whatever makes me happy. I want to put self above everything. I must be the only guy like that who wants my way or no way. Hmm. Seeking God's righteousness is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. How do you seek his righteousness? Huh. Setting a priority on personal holiness. Does he not say be holy because I am holy? Or does he say be selfish because I'm selfish? Whoa. Man, Lord, are you really serious about all this? You place a high demand on me. Was his son's death worth it? I mean, he gave a lot. When much is given, too much is, to whom much is given, much is required. That was something else my buddy hit me upside the head with yesterday. You know, when I first started walking with the Lord, I heard him crystal clear. And he gave me a little. And then I didn't hear him. And he gave me a little more, and I didn't hear him. But the more he gives me, the more he speaks to me, the more he requires of me. The more he speaks to me, the more he requires me to share that with other people. Huh. To whom much is given, much is required. If you don't want to hear from the Lord, then he ain't going to require much from you. If you want to go to hell, he'll let you. He'll chase you until the day you die because he loves you that much. But if that's what you want, 
He'll let you do it. We'll get off seek. I think you guys understand seek, right? Okay, ask, seek, and knock, knock. Then Jesus said, knock, and the door will be open for you. Here the Lord uses a metaphor for the action that desire produces. Here the Lord uses a metaphor for the action that a desire produces. When I desire something, I act upon that. When my daughter desires McDonald's, she says, Daddy, can I have McDonald's? She puts that desire into action. Okay? So when the Lord is saying, knock, he's requiring us to do something. You can't just say, God, will you do this for me? God, I'm thinking about you doing it. Lord, will you, will you do that for me? Will you do that for me? And then not do anything. Does he not say faith without works is dead? Do you believe that the Lord is going to move on your behalf? I believe he's going to move on my behalf. And he's like, come, son, partner with me. Walk humbly with me. Did he not say that to us earlier in the service? Walk humbly with me, son. That doesn't mean sit on my rump and let him do everything with, for me. It's me to walk with him hand in hand. <laughs> if a person needs something from someone behind the door, the most natural thing for them to do is to knock and keep on knocking until the door is opened. Keep on knocking. Do we do that? Are we doing that right now? Do we not recognize that there needs to be unity within our nation? Are we day in and day out crying out to the Lord for unity in our nation? Or are we going, I'd like to sock them right upside the head. What is wrong with them? They just don't get it. Huh. I promise I love you guys, each and every one of you. <laughs> don't take it personal, but take it personal. <laughs> Uh, hmm. knock what happens if nobody opens you knock again a little louder and a little louder until you're doing the police beat down and they open the door like what what's the deal oh golly well I knock and I was knocking so light but you wouldn't respond so I had to knock a little louder until some of us police, I got a feeling maybe would kick doors in. But I might be wrong. <laughs> I might be wrong. So if you could turn with me to Luke chapter 18. Um, Luke chapter 18. Wow, why would I do that? Okay, Luke chapter 18. Okay, there you go. Now you, I got, I got wrote down here on my notes, Luke chapter 18, 1 through 8, which is the story of the persistent widow. Now, you guys can read that if you'd like, but I have emphasis on verse 1, 18, Luke 18, verse 1, which is, one day, one day Jesus told his disciples a story to illustrate their need for constant prayer. For how much prayer? Constant prayer. And, that, and to show them that they must never give up. What did he show them? That they must never give up. How many times do we ask the Lord for something and because we're a microwave generation where we expect everything to be given to us in 15 seconds, we do not persist. And so we walk away. Doesn't he say right here in, 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 in this passage that uh, constant prayer and never give up, not occasional prayer and quit because you didn't get an immediate answer. And we're all reading the same thing, right? So... And the Lord let me live this out this past week. So um, you guys know I, I got a business, and, um, and we're swamped right now with business. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blessing. I ask that you would send more harvesters so that I can contain the blessing that you're sending. <laughs> um, but we got this guy who's called and called and called and called. And I picked up, and he's like, hey, I need you to come do an estimate. I'm like, I'm too busy. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I'm, I'm, look, I can't get to you in a timely fashion, and I don't want to make you upset, so I'm just going to tell you, no, I can't do it. And he goes, okay. And then he called again and again and again. And I let my voicemail fill up. So now if you call my phone and it goes to voicemail, it's going to go, the voicemail box is full so that nobody can leave any more messages. That's how busy we are. And I don't want to deal with it. It's, I, don't, I, don't, it's, I want it, I want it, but I cannot. Listen, the blessings of the Lord are chasing me down he is overtaking me with his goodness, and I cannot handle it. 
I wish that I could, but I can't because that's how awesome God is. So this guy, this guy, he called me every other day, every other day until I memorized his phone number. This went on for like three weeks. This dude called me, called me, called me, called me, called me. And eventually I'm like, GTS is a Scott. <laughs> and he's like, hey, dude, I know that you told me that he was too busy, but I need to get an estimate. I've called everywhere else and nobody will respond. And nobody, and I know that your book's super, super far out, but I, I just, I'm willing to wait. And I'm like, I don't even want to, I don't want to see this guy in person right now. <laughs> um, but you know what? As I made it over to his house on Thursday, he got his estimate and we got him scheduled for the end of September for a quick little two hour job. And you know how that guy got that? Persistence persistence. Now, I, I love the story of the persistent widow, but to me, it paints the Lord in a negative light. You know what I'm saying? He's like, learn a lesson from this judge or the widow that was done wrong. And at the end of the story here, somewhere in 17 or 18, he's like, I don't fear man and I don't fear God, but this lady is driving me nuts and I'm going to give her what she wants. I don't like to think that the Lord is like that, but do you get the point? The Lord allowed me to live this out over the last month. And at the very end, you know, when I was sitting in the guy's driveway, drawing up his estimate, the Lord started talking. And he was like, this is the example that I'm giving you. Don't stop asking. Don't stop seeking. Don't stop knocking. Huh. Ask, seek, and knock. Notice the three different senses being considered here, okay? Ask, we're speaking, okay? Seeking is, is mental. It is mental. And knocking is action, okay? So we're speaking, we're thinking, we're doing. Are you following me? Okay. So, and what's funny to me is, again, how we're in the 10-year on the Hebrew calendar 5780, you know what I'm saying? We're in the year of the mouth. We're actually, it's because it's the first year of the decade. It's actually the decade of the mouth, a decade of speaking things into existence, the decade of binding on earth and loosing on, binding on earth, binding on heaven, loose. You know, you get what I'm saying? Bind on earth, loose in heaven. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Asking is verbal. We are to use our mouths to petition our Father for our needs and our desires, okay? Seeking is mental. This is more than asking. This is setting our priorities and focusing of our heart. It is to focus. Set a priority. Rod likes to call it setting our face, setting our face as stone. Lord, help us to set our face as stone toward you. Prioritize and focus. And, and, and knocking is the physical action. Okay, although asking, or although at, uh, whew, calm down, whew. although asking and seeking are of great importance, they would be incomplete without knocking. Okay, I can ask God to do something, and I can focus on Him, but if I don't put my faith into action, does He not say He's a rewarder of those who seek Him? He, if I don't put these things into action, it becomes stagnant and never comes to fruition. You understand? In 1 John 3.18, the New Living Translation, it says, dear, dear children, let us stop saying we love each other. Let us really show it by our actions. How many... We got to stop saying we love people and demonstrate it by action. Didn't Jesus, didn't, didn't the Lord say, for God, love, for God so loved the world... He loved the world. I say I love the world, but do my actions really show it? Maybe I'm just the only one, <laughs> especially when driving. Do my actions really show that I love? We got to stop with the lip service, guys. Let your yes be your yes and your no be your no. If you can do it, then do it. If you cannot do it, do not say that you want to do it because you don't want to let somebody down. There's bunches of people that I don't want to let down, but unfortunately, when I take a phone call, I got to say, I'm too busy, I cannot do it. Because if I tell him I can do it, all a man has in this world is his word. And I think if you give a man your word, you better do it. <sighs> Scott, give yourself some grace. 
own. It's good to ask and to seek God, but if we don't put action into things that are pleasing to God, it's all for nothing. That action, it also has to be with being led by the Lord. Because I sometimes get into trouble by putting into action what I think because my motives are wrong and then I don't get the results that I desired. But if I can focus on the Lord's will and, and move when he asks me to move, everything usually pans out really well. And a lot of times a lot better than I ever expected it to. So it's not a coincidence that Moses wrote in Deuteronomy 6.5, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And then Jesus confirms it in Luke 10.27. Jesus confirms that in Luke 10, 27. Actually, it was a guy, it was, it was, it was a, a teacher of religious law, came to Jesus and said, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus said, well, you know what the law says. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. So that's where I come up with Jesus confirmed it. Because actually Jesus said, you're right. That is what the word says. Hmm. I don't even know where I'm at. One, one, three, four, five. All right, this was, what? So, so this is a piece that the Lord, I love you, Jesus. <laughs> I love you, Lord. Love the Lord with all your heart is to ask. That is speaking. This is what the Lord showed me this morning, and I'm excited to share with you guys because I haven't even got a full chance to ingest all of it. Love the Lord with all your heart. Okay, he says this in Deuteronomy, Moses says it, and then Jesus confirmed it. Love the Lord with all your heart. That is to ask. That is speaking. Because Matthew 12, 34 says, this is the hard part, you brood of vipers, how can you speak a good thing when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Love the Lord with all your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when our heart causes us to speak, which is asking. Are you guys following me? Asking the Lord is speaking. And then the second part of Deuteronomy there, it says, love the Lord with all your soul, which we're calling to seek. What, what, where I'm going with this is the Lord showed me ask, seek, and knock. The Lord showed me this morning that that's in correlation with love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength. So to love the Lord with all your soul is to seek. And what have we traditionally called the soul? The mind, the will, and the emotion. It's what you think, it's what you want, it's what you feel. Am I correct? So Colossians 3.2 says, Let heaven fill your thoughts. Let heaven fill your thoughts. Do not think only about things down here on earth. Again, it's focusing on our priorities, focusing our priorities to the Lord's will. Are you guys following me? Everybody's looking all crazy now. <laughs> Am I going too fast? Should I slow down? Lord, help them to get it the way that you gave it to me. Because when you gave it to me, it was amazing. <laughs> and the last part of Deuteronomy says, Love the Lord with all your strength. And the Lord was showing me to love the Lord with all your strength is action. It's the knocking part. It's the knocking. When we knock, it's our strength. It takes that, it takes that action. James uh, 2, James 2, it's actually 14 through 26. And I'll paraphrase this part. It says, Faith without works is dead. So the Lord was showing me this morning that in, in, in Deuteronomy, Moses was saying, you know, love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. And, and then the Lord was showing me that's what Jesus was referencing. This is my revelation. It might not be yours. But the Lord was showing me this morning that Jesus, that's what Jesus was correlating that to. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and strength. But he was also putting it into terms that we can understand is ask, seek, and knock. And I was super blessed this morning by it, regardless if you are or not. <laughs> uh, so you can check out James 2, 14 through 26. There's multiple uh, examples there of faith without works is dead. Okay. So again, Matthew 7, 8, it's um, the commands, ask, seek, and knock. See, Jesus tells us to do those things are followed by promises. The promises to everyone who asks, receives. Are there any strings attached to that? No? No strings. If you ask, you will receive. He doesn't even say, if you love me, if you believe in me. He doesn't give us no ifs. If you ask, you will receive. 
He says, if you seek me, you will find me. He doesn't even give any strings attached to that. And he says, if you knock, the door will be opened. Now, my question to you is, do we ask long enough? Do we seek long enough? Or do we knock long enough? And I just want to encourage you guys to continue asking for that miracle. Because he says, ask and you will receive. Continue seeking revelation and what he's wanting you to do and what he wants to do through you. He says, seek and you will find. And the last, he says, knock and the door will be opened. Persistence is the key, guys. Persistence. My amazing daughter will ask me 72 times to go to McDonald's. And eventually, she'll get it. <sighs> so, with that being said, don't be discouraged, guys, because you didn't get what you asked for. If you don't get it right away, check your heart. What are the motives behind it? The Lord's given us so many keys and so many examples he loves us so much. He desires us. He, he desires intimate time with Him. Be bold. Be bold about climbing under your dad's lap. How many, when we go to our, uh, when you go to your dad's house, I just get into the refrigerator. Because <laughs> he's my dad. You know, I, when, when, when Moses said, I want to see your face. And the Lord said, nah, that can't happen, because if you see my face, you're going to die. But when I pass by me, you can look. I want that kind of, I, I'm, I, I don't even want, I have. Huh, I have that kind of boldness. I'm like, Lord, I want to see your face. Not in a, any kind of dishonorable way. Lord, I, I, I desire you. When I woke my daughter up this morning, I desire to see your face. And he desires that from us. And when we desire that from him, He's going to give. Ask, and you'll receive. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door will be open for you guys. <sighs> so, Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and to love you and to put action to the words that you've given, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you would let us soak, let these words soak into our spirits, let them soak into our soul, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we ask that you would help to remind us as we go throughout the week the things that were said. And Lord, we just ask that you would help us to glorify you and help us to manifest your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You guys are dismissed, released, but go pray with your friends and brothers and sisters and worship at the same time. We love you guys.